What's going on YouTube? Today we got a fade. We're gonna do an all around fade. Show the basically beginner steps or the beginner's process to having a, a complete fade on straight hair. And he does have a lighter hair texture than most straight hair people do. Um, it's kind of, or it does. It's kind of more difficult to do hair texture like this, uh, brown or you know blondish type of uh, hair texture. Uh, so we're just gonna show you all the steps and processes. I ain't gonna really hold y'all too long. We're gonna jump inside the video. Stick around. They got information that you probably would need in your barber career and yeah let's get to it all right first thing obviously what you want to do is make sure everything is lifted up and off the scalp see uh his hair is kind of everywhere this way that way this way that way now we're just combing it getting it ready and prep for us to um you know start our initial guidelines and debulking and starting our debulking process so that's what we're doing right now just combing everything back Making sure everything is nice and lifted off the scalp. And this is kind of like the barber analysis type type thing right now. I'm kind of judging or seeing if he has any calyx or any spots in his head that I need to, you know, watch out for when I'm doing his uh, his haircut. To start the debulking process, we're going to take our number three guard on our Super and Pros. This is a wall senior guard. And we're just going to slowly just go up. We are going to use a flick out motion. And we're just riding the back of his head. <laughs> Uh, I know y'all y'all probably gonna say pause, but you know we just riding the clippers on the back of uh, this young man's head, not going up too high because we are gonna have a slight dip in the back. Just kind of just getting a little outlay of what's to come, basically. You want to make sure you use our comb side when it's that when the hair is thicker. You want to make sure you use your comb. And as y'all can see, the hair is moving towards the back of his head, so I kind of gotta go this way when the bulking. Of fading. This whole entire process, I'm probably gonna have to go up sideways when I'm fading. And the lever is all the way open on our number three guard. And I'm flicking out. I'm not digging into, in, into his head. I'm not just going straight up. I'm flicking out just slightly. So, be, just because we want all this weight to be here up top, just for the time being. And so once everything is debulked on both sides, the right and the left side of our client's head, and in the back, basically getting that shape or that outlay that we want to do, now we want to start going in and setting our guidelines. So for his haircut, by looking at his haircut and objective that we're trying to reach, he's not going to have no C cup right here because we're not doing a drop face, we're not making it go up like this, preserving this uh, C cup area. We're not, um, not going to go up and drop it in the back. We're going to just go straight across and just slightly drop it. Just slight, just basically just slightly dropping it. Um, not really preserving this area right here because it is a mid to high fade. It can pass for, I would say, uh, a mid fade for him. So, so with our level all the way closed, we're going to start right here, making this first little line. And we're just going to do this throughout the whole entire haircut making his first initial guideline whenever you're fading it's all about pressure you don't want to put too much pressure I feel like it messes up the fade you just want to let the clippers do what they do for us we're going to leave the bottom the bottom half of his hair down here because it creates contrast within the fade and it really brings out the fade allowing me to see the fade a lot more so setting in the guideline all the way around the head, which I would, which I want to do, or start off just to make a more, you know, even look, or make sure both sides are even whenever you're doing the fade. You kind of want to start one side first. Me, I'm right-handed, so I will start on this right side, making the first initial guideline, and then what you want to do, you want to continue to this left side over here, and with this left side right here, you want to do the same exact thing, and then turn to the back. Hold your head down for me. You kind of want to make sure all both points are coming down to a straight, uh, you know, an even level. And you kind of want to even it out for real. And then that, that right there is the foundation for your fade. Basically, this outlay right here is how your fade is going to transition. Because whenever we put in our, you know, our first or uh, second guideline and then we start moving around with our guards and stuff like that, that's, this, is, this first guideline right here will dictate how the rest of your fade will basically turn out. All right, to start off our fade, we're going to open our lever all the way, and we're going to make that first initial guideline. We're going to go up about an inch. About an inch's width inside of the fade. We're making this first guideline, or second guideline. 
I'm just saying, a whole bunch of random stuff and just be messing up. But I don't cut nothing out for it because I just keep everything wrong. That's the good part about it. Whatever you do right here, you want to make sure it's the same as that link going towards the back. And the same thing applies from when we sit in that first guy line to the second guy line. You want to make your way towards the back. And then once you make your way towards the back, you want to switch over to the other side and then make them meet at the same width, the same length that you said in the first, the second guy with, line with over here. And just make them two meet in the back of his head. The second guy line, we're going to fade it out and we're going to use my fading down technique. Basically, slowly closing the lever and moving down with this side of the fade till we get to this right here with the lever all the way closed. So we're going to start with this level all the way open. Now we're going to close it a little bit because this guideline, the second guideline, was init uh, initially set in, you know, with the level all the way open. So now we're going to go one down or one um, notch closed and we're going to start moving down within the fade. And we're going to fade this whole entire left side. And we, I do have a brush comb. You can find this on Amazon or a lot of y'all. You're looking for it for real. It's really helpful. It doesn't take like too long to switch in between and comb the hair, brush the hair, comb the hair. Look at me, I'm, I'm messing up, but comb the hair. It really don't take much, um, I don't have to turn around and go to my station and, you know, go get a comb or a brush and keep going in between both of them for real. So we're gonna do this into this line until we reach the level all the way close in this line or this whole entire area right here. It's all the way Fade it out. Don't really take that much. Now we're going to take our number three guard and we're just going to go up with the lever all the way open. And we're slightly flicking out. And I've got my clipper turned sideways because his hair does want to uh, go to the back. And so we got to cut against the grain to make a blend. And so that's what we're doing. We're using a slight flick out motion because we do not want to dig inside of his or oh, inside the top of his hair. Right. So basically at this point, we're gonna start moving down with our fade. The same thing we did for this second guy line that we set in, we're gonna start fading down from the number three guard that we set in up here and just start fading down the three guard, then we move the two guard, then the one and a half guard. Then we're gonna use the one guard and then we're gonna use the half guard to just to fade out this line right here. So, it's a very quick process. Fade that, move down, close the lever. As you're closing the lever, you should never be in the same exact spot or the previous spot. Fading down allows you to preserve the hair up here and not fade too high. A lot of beginner barbers or a lot of people that are starting out, they tend to start from the bottom and work their way up and kind of, they to, well, they basically tend to just fade a little bit too high on what's intended for them. And now the client looks like he has a mohawk or some sort of, or, you know, just like a, a, a higher flat top. A lot of people would take a flat top too high or a high top and make it look like it's just sitting on top of the hair. And we don't want that. We want it to nicely graduate into his hair. Or into the top of his hair was the most thickest head. Now we move down with our number two guard. And we're gonna do the same exact process basically, continuing with the number one guard, with the number two guard all the way open, and continuing from where we left off with the number three guard all the way closed. So all the way open. And just follow the flow down. Whenever I hear the hair cutting, I know that's when it's time to start flicking out. Because now I'll reach the de designated spot where the three bar was previously just at. But fading down, it's kind of, um, it will help a lot of y'all maintain y'all blend or maintain y'all fade, making it look a lot better. But it's somewhat hard to, to kind of keep track of a fade because we're now not setting in no guidelines. That's why most people tend not to do it, but it's very helpful and it's very satisfying seeing the, the fading down process just come together for real. Because it really just happens just like that. Really just around the one guard area. Whenever you get to that one and a half guard and the one guard area, it'll start coming out and you'll really start seeing the fade just come together. Now with our half guard, we're gonna continue and we're gonna begin with the half guard with the level all the way open, wherever we left off with the two guard all the way closed. 
Same process. Simple, simple, simple steps. Simple steps. And these steps really work. I get Instagrams all day, uh, DMs all day telling me how, you know, people have improved with inside of their fading process just because they watch these videos. So I got, I got receipts. I got receipts of people improving, basically. Or that these techniques really work. And I use this same technique on, um, you know, on every single hair texture. No matter the skin color, no matter the hair texture, it works on everybody. That's why I don't have to keep up, keep changing my, my fade process up and basically confusing myself, basically. It just makes everything more simplified in the long run. So I can just get straight to it and get my haircuts in and out of here. So at our number one guard, we're going to continue the process and fading down. Starting with the level all the way open. Every single um, guard that we put on here, we're always starting with this lever all the way open. And we're working our way down. Every single time. Consistency within our fade. Doing the same exact thing that we did previously. So we can have a nice outcome or a nice blurry fade, basically. Doing the same thing, same motions, flicking out slightly. Dealing with this type of hair texture, or this not even this type of hair texture, this hair color for real, it makes it, the average barber, it makes it hard to see the blend basically. It's very hard to see the, see a, a blend, or it's very hard to see the blend on blind people, blind hair people. It's just a little tougher on straight hair when the hair is that color, I would say. It just takes time, repetition, practice, doing it over and over and over again. Getting those clients that are actually let you practice and stuff like that. That's all it takes. All it takes is one person to let you practice on the head. So you get that look that you want. Because you want somebody that you can really just take your time on for real. You don't want to rush your head or you don't want to feel pressured or rushed inside of your shop. And now you're cutting hair within, let's say the haircut is like 30 something minutes. You really want to take, when you first start out, you really want to take an hour I would say to really break down because every head, every hair texture, every hair color is a lot different from the last client. I might have another client with, I want to say orange hair or brownish orange hair. He might come in, but his hair shape might be a little bit different or his hair, cut, his hair uh, texture might be a little bit looser. So it's really, you kind of want to break down every single hair, hair texture or different types of people that you can possibly get. So when a person comes in like that again, you'll be ready for it and you'll know what to do to achieve that end goal that you're, or that end product that you're looking for. Now we're gonna move down to our smallest guard, which is the half guard. We're gonna start with our level all the way open. And we're just trying to knock out this bottom line right here. I don't know if y'all can see this line or not, but I can see it. It comes over time with developing the barber's eye. And we're still flicking out. Close the level a little bit. And we're getting to a point to where the line looks like it's disappearing. And once we get it there to, a, to where the line looks like it's disappearing, we kind of want to go down one more and start point cutting, basically detailing, splitting all these little dark spots into two pieces of hair. I mean, ba yeah, basically splitting four pieces of hair into two and two pieces of hair into one. Basically cre creating the blurry fade or the blurry look that you're trying to achieve. Because you know everybody wants a blurry fade. Everybody. And to achieve that, you got to detail. You got to learn how to detail and when is the correct time to de detail. And if, like, most people probably detail in a spot that doesn't even need to necessarily be detailed in. So you kind of want to make sure it just uh, takes a little bit of time, watch a few videos, get it down back, understand it a little bit more. And that's all we're doing right now. And that is it. Let me show y'all, touch your head a little bit more, right there. That's the fade from right now. We're gonna, um, let me zoom out the camera real quick. So this is the fade right now. We still have to blend the back and we still have to blend the opposite side. We can use shears to kind of blend this into the top, which I will show as well. But this is where we just came from. Put your head down for me. Right there. Look at all that. 
The other side was just exactly like that. And with these steps, the fade came out just like this. And y'all sit there and watch the whole entire thing. Didn't skip through, didn't do any of that. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do the opposite side, which is this left side. And then we're gonna make both sides meet in the back. And then we're gonna take this back section and just make them equally meet. That's easier for me to maintain my fade and you know keep the same shape as my fade. I don't want one side of the fade going in a straight line or faded up like if it was in a straight line and then one side look like it's slightly dropping down to the back. So I work on this side, work on this side, make sure the identical set in the guidelines fade exactly the same. And then I'm making the meat in the back basically. Exact same thing that we did when we set in that first guideline and the second guideline. So what I like to do, I like to start in the middle. We're gonna start in the middle with our number three guard all the way open. Go up, make sure we're brushing down. All this weight at the top, we're still gonna flick out, but all this weight at the top is gonna be taken care of because we're also gonna use our shears to really blend everything in. We're gonna use our texturizing shears and we're gonna use our regular cutting shears. And we're gonna slowly move down. We're making sure we're getting all this area as well too, working from this side of the fade to this side of the fade. Because remember, we didn't work all the way to the back of the hair coming from this side or the other side. Now we're going to move down with our two guard with the lever all the way open. And we're going to continue where we left off with our number three guard. Still doing the same exact thing, move it down with the side of the fade using that same flick out motion with this cut. And remember, you should never be in the same exact spot that you just previously cut whenever you close the lever like this. You should always move down. And remember, I'm not way up here with the, with the, with the clipper. I'm not cutting anything way up here. It's just the comb. The comb, this is a comb, and the comb feeds the hair inside of the, um, the clipper or to the clipper blade where it cuts it at. The comb just ensures a certain length and also, so you can cut the hair basically, feeding the the hair into the um the hair into the the comb, and then feeding it into the clipper blade. So to get all this weight from right here around this area, like you can see the weight kind of oh right here with inside of his fade, or it's just sitting on top of his head. We're gonna take our shears, our cutting shears, and we're just gonna we're not gonna go in like this. We're kind of kind of um kind of hold it at a little angle, and every hair. Because it's really not, you see, it's a successful blend until it gets to the hairs all the way here at the top. So this, the hairs all the way up here, those are the hairs that we're cutting. We're not worrying about this. All of this right here is a successful blend, but this, the hair right up here, it lays down on this hair down here, and it creates the weight right there. It creates the weight line that we want to get rid of. So we're just going to get rid of that just by slightly just cutting it. Basically, you want to lift the hair up to where it's a successful blend. Then when it starts to get all choppy and everything, or you start to see that weight line, that's when you want to start really just cutting. You just want to go up like this. It's kind of layering, layering the hair, I want to say, whenever you're taking out the weight line. And this really just gets the shape or a more precise look with these cutting shears. And to make it blend, you can use the texturizing shears. Basically, the shears that look like this, the shears with the teeth, I call them the texturizing shears. And you just want to do the same thing. Go in that area and just cut it. And it's basically really just blends everything in for real. It gives it that blurry look that you want. You don't want to do too much, just enough. Just to make that blend a little bit more blurry and make the top go into the blend or to make the blend go into the top of his hair and that's really let me back the camera up so I can see let's sit right there now we're about to remove all this bulk and then we're about to do something to the top um basically and then we're going to show the end product or the end the end of the cut basically so this is the fade right here a nice clean mid fade we did slightly drop it in the back as y'all can see Put your head down a little bit for me. Let me angle this a little bit better. But a nice clean mid fade 
something simple, a nice go-to for your clients and stuff like that, you will get a lot of fades as a beginner barber or as somebody that's doing, you know, just cutting hair for real. You will get a lot of these different fades like this or this in particular fade. But it's HYB. If you're not here in business, then what you're doing? And we out. <laughs> <laughs> My wife, but she likes it, I guess. Nice texture in the bag. I can see, as y'all can see, it's a nice little flow. We do have some powder in here. As you can see, the powder is coming out. Nice little flow to it. Fade in the bag. Nice, even fade. It's not really hitting you right now. Like how it's supposed to. Until you make like 25, 20, 24. 20 something years old, then it's gonna really hit you for real. Uh... Imagine how crazy it would be if I started like receiving like super <laughs> two years. Yeah, that'd be crazy. Never hits. I don't know. I feel like it hits.